starting off where we left off. This is the Mark IV Pattern B. You can see it's pretty dirty. When I take these apart, what I like to do is first I take apart everything here in the receiver and set those aside in a Ziploc bag. Let them sit in some oil. The Ziploc bag is a good idea, that way you don't lose any parts. Once this is all broken down, the next step is to take off this four stock. And the way I do that is take the cleaning rod out first. You take out these two barrel bands. This one can be trouble with the screw here. I have to see if this is seized up or not. If it's uh, pretty locked up, you can always take, um, put some coil in there. If it doesn't work, you can always take a small little um, butane torch to it. It should break it free. Now once that's all disassembled, I have to remove the two butt plate screws. Hopefully those aren't too tight in there, otherwise I'll have to get my impact driver out. And then I'll take the stock bolt out and take the butt stock off. And then I'll just basically let all that sit for a bit in some oil before I um, scrub the metal down. As far as the wood goes, um, I like using um, some linseed oil and just kind of let it sit for a little bit and then you kind of rub it with the palm of your hand with the grain of the wood. And that actually will get a lot of this gunk out of it and then just wipe it down. I want to be really careful with linseed oil and especially like boiled linseed oil as it might catch fire so you want to make sure that you don't have um, your used rags laying around. One thing I forgot to mention is make sure that you turn this retaining screw so it allows you to punch out this caulking indicator. If you try to punch it through without doing that, you'll actually destroy the screw. And originals are pretty difficult to find. And if you do, they're pretty expensive. You can find reproductions, but it's best not to have to force yourself to buy parts. So a quick tip on the four stock. If you have an issue pulling it off, you have to kind of like pull it down this way uh, since it hooks in back here. Basically, it has this little hook. What I like to do is, if it's really stuck on there, you can take a brass punch and just set it right here on the steel part of the nose cap and just lightly tap it a few times. Not, not too hard, but just lightly tap it um, on each side, kind of alternating between them, and then eventually it will get loose. So this one was pretty tough, and then it, as soon as it breaks free, you can start pulling it, and it'll start coming off. So these butt plate screws are the steel type. Usually these Mark IVs had the brass butt plate screws, but there are exceptions. These are pretty hard to get out. They pretty much get typically fused in this butt plate. So there's a couple techniques you can do to get these screws out. The easiest way to get them out is to use an impact driver. So use one of these. And basically what you do is, is you fit the bit into the screw here and you hold it and then you hit the back of it with a hammer. Um, you only want to do that to basically break the screw free. You don't want to extract the whole screw doing that because you're going to destroy the, um, basically where it was drilled in. You don't want to destroy the, the threads for it. So what you can do after you break it is then you can um, get a screwdriver and see if you can get it out. If you can't get it out with a screwdriver, uh, you can use a ratchet. I find that's helpful. Basically, you, you press it really hard into the screw and hold it with one hand and then turn it, and that should start uh, extracting your screw. Another method you can use is you can get a brass hammer and just tap the butt plate around the screw a little bit, and that might break the screw free from the butt plate. So just a couple techniques. Uh, to get the screws out. They're turning out pretty easily now. This uh, top screw, I'm about to pull that out, as well as the bottom screw here. This one actually only took one hit from an impact driver to loosen. This took a couple hits to rotate a little bit, and then I was able to get it out using the technique with the ratchet. Once you get the butt plate off of a Mark IV, just a really cool feature I want to show is this brass plate that they put on. They put this little brass plate, uh, it's almost like a little sheet, right here where the butt plate is and then it rests against the wood 
And what that does is actually prevents a lot of wear and corrosion to the butt plate, having that basically that brass spacer between the two, and it protects the wood of the, of the butt stock as well. So it's just a really cool feature you'll find on the Mark IVs. It's got a pretty good marking on there. It should be even better when I clean it up. It's a bunch of hardened grease and dust and stuff. A number here underneath the receiver. It's pretty much caked, but I can already see some proof marks. As a pattern B, this was actually a new made rifle. It wasn't a conversion, so. Other patterns were conversions of the 402 and field martini. So you'll see extra proof marks on the barrels. I'll be going into the different patterns in a later video. Definitely a lot of grease, but it's not a lot of it's not hardened grease. A lot of it's still pretty soft, so it should be helpful when I clean it up. A lot of grease on the wood too. The butt stock just needs to be cleaned up. So these are all the parts for the Mark IV. Got it all broken down. I like to keep some of the parts like this trigger guard and the block here assembled until I'm ready to clean them out. That way I don't have a ton of loose parts in the bag. So far they look pretty good. Kind of make out some of the markings, but I'll see them better when I clean them up. I did have to hit the middle band here with the butane torch just a little bit. It didn't take very long and then the screw started moving. It's pretty dirty. Sometimes it helps to get a brass brush and clean out both sides of the screw and and that gap there on the on the band there. You can see these little parts here. I put them in the bag already, but they look pretty good. So I got the stock hook out. Fortunately, there's quite a bit of wood rot in there. You can kind of tell that that top layer of wood got a bit rotted out, especially with all the rust and everything that was growing in there. So I'm not exactly sure what I'll do yet, but. Before firing this, either this stock should be repaired or replaced in this part. And I've cleaned it out pretty well, but you can see how badly rusted and pitted this stock hook became underneath the wood line. Just a quick video on the butt stock before I put it all back together. See all the parts cleaned up pretty nicely. Stock bolt has some minor pitting, but I definitely like the wasted style because it helps it um, from getting stuck in the channel there. Stock. As I go through these markings, I'll be using a uh, book that I have. It's uh, The Martini Henry for Queen and Empire. It's a pretty good book. I'm also joined by my fellow inspector here. But this is a pretty good book to have. It goes over all the markings and everything. And the original manual sergeant major over here approves of it very much. Starting with the butt stock, you can see there's a couple markings that are visible. I still have some cleanup to do on it. But some of the grease is getting cleaned off, and you can see the AL here, as well as the round L. That's for the uh, Alabad Arsenal. That's in India. And it has some Napoli markings as well. And it looks like a rack number here. You can see that this has an 1887 date infield manufacturer. And it's a Mark IV. Now these receivers were new made receivers. A lot of the other parts came from the converted 402 infield martinis. And it really, there really wasn't a, a rhyme or reason in what parts they used from them. 
but the Pattern Vs were new made rifles with new barrels and the new uh, receivers as well. So they weren't uh, barrels that were converted from the 402 to 450. So another feature on the Mark IV that makes it a Pattern A, B, or C is the Knox form here, which is this piece right here uh, where the barrel meets the receiver. And it's really the easiest way to tell because you can tell without having to take it apart and see if there's a single row of proofs underneath the barrel. But a pattern A is pretty easy to tell because it's really short. It's about around here somewhere. Whereas a B and C are a lot closer. You can see this is a pattern B because this measures just about 31 millimeters. Whereas on a pattern C it would measure about 28 millimeters. So that's an easy way to tell just picking one up if you measure the Knox form. You can tell if, uh, based on the length there, which pattern it is. The only real true way to tell if this was a new made barrel is if it has one row of proofs, though. So looking at the barrel, a couple markings to go over. This 88 is for 1888, when the barrel was mated with the receiver. You have the serial number here that matches the serial number of the receiver. There's also some proofs here I can't really make out. But here's the single row of proofs that makes this a pattern B means this is a new made barrel. So from left to right you have the first one which is finished forge and actually made the barrel. The second one is when they finished boring it out. The third one is the inspection after first proof. Fourth is inspection after rifling. The fifth is the inspection after chamber reaming and dimensional checks. The sixth is inspection after front and back sights have been attached. The seventh was the inspection after second proof and the eighth was the final inspection before browning. Just a quick look at some of the parts here. We got the breech block here. It has the EM crossed out for infield martini and a 4 there. It was converted to a Mark IV and a WD for the War Department. And you can see some markings there on the other side. This looks like it has a WD as well on the tumbler. And it's a little hard to make out with some of the light pitting, but there's a WD there as well. The trigger guard here came out nicely. I don't like how this screw looks. It was pretty banged up before. So I'll probably replace this down the road. There's uh, reproduction screws like these out there that I'll probably put in there. So I got the Mark IV all cleaned up. We'll go ahead and take a closer look at it. Butt plate still got some surface rust on it. That'll take care of itself some oil. See the finish is starting to come through pretty well. There's still a lot of hardened grease on there. I'll have to slowly remove with some linseed oil and some creamers. But overall, it looks pretty good. You can see the receiver marks there. I use some chalk to bring them out a little better. The trigger and trigger guard assembly all came out pretty good. I can see some proof marks there. There's a bit of minor pitting. Some parts of the barrel you can see even when the stock's on, but otherwise pretty good. Put some chalk on the ranges there. See more of the finish starting to come through. It just takes time apply some linseed oil and then let it sit and then rub it in with the grain and wipe it off. There's the muzzle with the cleaning rod there. Bayonet lug. See the brass cup? Much better than the steel cups used in the Mark IIs. Less chance of any stock damage being caused. See a proof mark there on the lever. Looks to be one remaining on the trigger there. Looks to be one remaining on the trigger guard. And you can see the stamp for the stock hook there. It's pretty good. It's the Mark III pattern. There's uh, two other patterns of stock hooks. There's the three digit number there underneath the receiver. Wood's pretty good. Got the rear band there. Got 
decided the butt stock looks pretty good. Got some proof marks. The inspector seems to approve. You can still see that this is at a bit of an angle here. That's because there's so much um, rust and everything happened to the steel that it's not quite even. So I'm probably going to take this out again uh, down the line once I let the oil that's inside of there work its way on it. And then probably uh, smooth out the steel that's in there so this sits flush. You can see that's the Native Service Nepal stamp. And the wood looks actually a little better on this side. You can see a lot of the finish coming through already. It just really just takes patience. I didn't notice that before, but there's uh, some markings here. We've got a four and another War Department stamp. I'm going to show you how smooth the action is see it opens pretty easily. I'll take one of these snap cap rounds, these are dummy rounds, loads up, see it closes really smooth. You can see the extractor works pretty well. Almost clears the rifle. It's overall a pretty good rifle, like how it came out. I'll have the Mark II done in a little bit. I'm going to let it sit a little longer in some oil. It's definitely a really dirty weapon and I'll probably move on to one of my infield projects in the meantime. If you'd like to see those videos when they come out, feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.